And next up, we have Mr. Alan Verbner. Uh, so, Alan, how are you doing today, and where are you calling in from, sir? Hello, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you on this podcast. Um, I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina, far away from everything, I guess, uh, down south of South America, so the, the bottom of South America. Um, so, as you said, I'm a software engineer. Um, I've been in this industry about for about 10 years, let's say. Um, and I co-founded a software development company named Attix. Uh, we have been in the industry for six years now. And we met Charles about three years ago. And you can do the math, but we started working on Cardano-related stuff since then. Uh, as you said, we have been part of Growth and Dig Team, which is a Scala, a Ethereum Classic, a specialized team. But we have also done some stuff for Cardano, um, so we can chat about that later. Um, I think it's 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 quite important to tell you guys about the place where I came from, because it will make m more sense to you to understand why. Uh, we are involved with cryptocurrencies. So um, Argentina is a crazy country. Uh, I'm not sure if you uh, are all aware of it. Um, I, I did my homework um, and I have some rough, t rough numbers just to tell you about our situation. For example, can you guess what's the inflation rate uh, in Argentina at the moment, like, like for the last year? Can you imagine that, that number? I think it went down like 50%. No, no, but I'm talking about, yeah, no, the I inflation have, rate is, uh, okay. Oh, uh, no, I have no idea what the inflation rate is in Argentina. I think in the U.S. it was approaching 3%, 2.6 or something, but what, what was it in Argentina? <laughs> oh, in, Argenti uh, in Argentina, it's 40%. Wow. 40%. So last, okay. just the last year. And actually, it's funny because uh, Sebas uh, came to Argentina around March, some, some or I, I can't exactly remember the date, but he was around March. And I met him uh, a month ago in Korea. And when he came, we had uh, the $1 was equivalent to 20 pesos. And when I met him in Korea, it was $1, 40 pesos, right? So yeah, that's crazy. I, I can see your face, Philip. Yes, yes, that's, that's the country where we live in. And by all means, don't believe this country, it's like a war zone. So we don't have war, luckily. Um, but we have those kind of things that makes our lives uh, more difficult. We have, uh, I, I always say that we have uh, a part of our brain like continuously thinking about inflation and money and all that kind of stuff. And that's why uh, we have uh, one of the biggest cryptocurrencies communities within uh, uh, South America at least. And, and I have, more, I have more, more data for you, for example, um we have about 30 percent of uh 30 percent of our population is under the poverty is 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 poor um we have former uh, government officials in jail because of corruption uh trials and this is a really specific thing but in 2001 we had a major crisis before that we used to have a peg between dollar and peso we have one peso was equal to one dollar, and in two thousand one, that uh, that stopped working somehow, um, and people got their savings stuck in banks. Actually, we have a word for that. It's corralito, which is like a I don't know the translation, but it's like a fence. So people wasn't able to retire their savings from the banks, and then if you had dollars then they converted them to pesos at a specified rate, which was $1 was 140 pesos. But then the, everything changed and the, it was up to the free market. And a lot of people with a lot of savings that they were working really hard to keep those savings in the banks to be just to spend uh, uh, when they were get old and those savings were gone. So, I, I still remember, I was a, a little kid, but I remember uh, uh, old people having uh, going to the banks and with their keys, they were like just uh, beating the doors of the banks, asking for their money. And it was really, really sad. 
So as you can imagine, we are used to bear markets somehow, <laughs> and, and, and we are used to think about, uh, I don't know, uh, this exchange rate is, uh, and all these things that makes our life, as I said, more difficult. And also we think that cryptocurrencies are a way to escape from, for, from that scenarios, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's how we got involved into cryptocurrencies.